Welcome to Bennett's Bike Social and another episode of Homeschooling. In this episode, we're going to explain motorcycle language. Now, what I mean by this is too many times we use a unique language that not everybody understands. If I went to a golf course, I don't know what a double bogey par seven is with a three wood. And if I go on a boat, I'm not too sure which is port and starboard and where the bow is. I think, is that the bow, the front or the back? Anyway, in motorcycling, it's exactly the same. We use expressions like wheelie, stoppy, race shift, quick shift, knee down, elbow down, power slide. All these terminologies that people are afraid to ask what they are. So we're going to explain it very simply. So when you sit down with your kids this evening, you can talk motorcycling. So let's go through some of the key ones that we all use. Wheelie. Pretty obvious, this is when the front wheel rises and we carry on on one wheel, which is the back wheel. This is either done deliberately when you slip the clutch, which is the left bar, you dump the clutch, or it's done through rapid acceleration over a crest or a rise. If we don't want the wheelie to occur, we can close the throttle, we can wait for an electronic intervention, or we can use the back brake. All three will stop the wheelie. Stoppy. Almost the opposite of a wheelie, this is when the bike lifts the rear and rides on the front wheel, either at a standstill or a rolling stoppy. Again, this is done with heavy braking once the forks have bottomed out. If you don't want the stoppy to occur, you let off the front brake, the back wheel comes back down, or the ABS will kick in or other rider aids. Backing in. You'll see this a lot in racing with heavy braking and the rear starts to come round on heavy braking. This is done when the back wheel is still turning, but is going slower than the speed of the front wheel. If the back wheel locks, that's a skid. That's not backing in. That's an entirely different thing. That's like what you would do on a push bike when you was a kid. Backing in is controlling the speed of the rear wheel, so it's going slightly slower than the front wheel. And by this, this scrubs off speed on the way into the corner. Knee down, it's pretty straightforward. It's when your knee slider touches the road or the racetrack. We do this to get the rider in the correct position to move the center of gravity. We may look on this in future videos. In racing, some top level riders can use their knee as a third wheel. By this, I mean they can actually save a slide by pushing their knee into the ground and getting the bike back upright. The extreme of knee down is elbow down. It's exactly the same thing, but you've got bigger lean. In the wet and in tricky conditions, knee down is also used as a gauge. So you can work out how far you are over in lean because your knee is starting to touch. Straightforward? Good. Power sliding and drifting. Simple, simple, simple. Front wheel is doing 50. The rear wheel is going faster than the front wheel. When this occurs, the rear wheel starts to slide. If we put lean onto this, it will drift and it will change our trajectory. In extreme cases, we can get the rear wheel spinning really aggressively, maybe double the speed of the front wheel. This will mean we are sliding or doing a rolling burnout because the back tire will be doing double the speed and there'll be smoke bellowing off the back tire. If we've got huge lean, we don't want the rear wheel to go much faster than the front, otherwise we'll spin out. With a little bit of lean, we can afford for the rear wheel to go much faster than the front. Usually power sliding occurs when we're at the edge of the grip and we are trying to accelerate and dial in the power and the back wheel starts to lose grip and it progressively starts to slide. The other way is completely showboating and having fun and just smoking the rear tire. Airbag. So we've got kind of two traits of thought here. One is to have the airbag on the motorcycle, like Honda's Goldwing. So in the event of a crash, you hit the airbag and not the motorcycle. The second scenario is the airbag is on the rider. Sometimes this airbag can be deployed from a cable that connects you to the motorcycle. So when you come away from the motorcycle, the airbag goes off. Or the best scenario is a logger in your clothing, which detects when you're about to crash and the airbag deploys. This can be done off-road, on-road, race levers, jackets, Cordura. Brilliant form of technology, saving a huge amount of collarbones and crashes. Race shift. You may have heard of this terminology. This is essentially changing gear in racing the opposite way. So we are going up instead of down and changing gear the opposite way to road shift. The advantage of this 
is on big leaning left-handed corners, we don't have to get our foot underneath the gear peg to change gear. We can tap down on the gear. So we're in big lean corner, accelerating hard, we're in third, we tap down for fourth, we tap down for fifth. We've still got plenty of ground clearance because we don't have to get our foot under. That's one of the big advantages of race shift. Saying that, there are still a lot of riders who are hugely successful on road shift. Dean Harrison for one. Knee sliders, elbow down. We've kind of covered that in knee down. Knee sliders are the actual pucks that go on your knees. And now we're getting to a stage of where we're having el replacement elbow sliders. On race boots, you'll also have replacement toe sliders. Does exactly the same thing. When you toe, when you run out of ground clearance, your toe slider will touch, gives you an indication of your lean, and these can be replaceable on race boots. Slipper clutch. Again, another technical terminology, gonna bring it down to a very simple level. This prevents the back wheel from locking up when you come down the gears aggressively. Really important on a big V-twin or a bike with high compression. Choke. On all the bikes, you will have a manual choke. This raises the RPM for cold warm-ups. Um, most modern bikes will have an automatic choke, but on an older bike, you may have a cable operated choke. Fuel tap. Again, most modern bikes will have a reserve light or a fuel gauge, but on older bikes, especially bikes with carburetors, you'll have a fuel tap. So when you start to run out of fuel, you'll feel the bike surging because it's running out of fuel. You'll turn from on to reserve. Once you flick the tap over, you have around 10 to 30 miles of reserve fuel. Remember when you fuel back up to put the fuel back on. Otherwise, the next time when you come to run out of fuel, you'll go for the reserve switch and it'll already be on reserve. Fuel cap, pretty straightforward and easy. Uh, it's usually located on top of the fuel tank, which is usually on top of the frame. They can be under the seat or in different areas of the bike. Open the fuel cap, add the fuel. The fuel will automatically click uh, and stop refueling once it's near the top. ABS, anti-lock braking system. This prevents the front or back wheel from locking, which may cause an accident. On some modern bikes, this is also lean sensitive. So the brakes won't lock as you're leaning and braking. This is done by measuring the, wheel, the front and rear wheel speed. When the system detects that one has momentarily stopped, it will release the brake pressure slightly. If you want to check out one of our previous videos, we go into this in a little more detail. IMU, Inertial Measurement Unit. This is a device on the bike that measures what the bike is doing. This may be lean angle, this may be pitch, it may be yaw, but it is essentially transmitting to the bike what the bike is doing, what dynamics. This is connected to rider aids like the ABS or traction control. So it knows how much to release the brake pressure or how much to reduce the power during big lean, during dynamic riding. Launch control. Developed in racing, and now we see that transition over to road bikes, specifically sports bikes. This is where the bike controls the acceleration from a launch. For example, it will either uh, allow the bike to only rev to a certain RPM. So you will rev the bike, it will only allow it to a certain RPM. You dump the clutch and the bike's rider aids take over the launching and acceleration. So it doesn't allow you to wheelie, flip or wheel spin. It's a simple case of holding the throttle, letting go of the clutch and letting the bike do all the work. Understeer. Little bit complex, but I'm going to bring it down to a really, really simple level. If you're going straight and you go into a corner and you want that to be your apex and the bike drifts or you run wide, that is generally what we would call understeer. In extreme scenarios in MotoGP and top level racing, understeer can be where you actually lose traction with the front, understeer and get it back again. But generally speaking in road terminology, and the way we use it is understeer means the bike wants to go straight on rather than go around the corner. May that be right or left. Chatter. You'll often hear a lot of riders in MotoGP, World Supers, in BSB complain of chatter. What they're trying to explain is that they feel a vibration or a chatter through the bike. Now this can be because a wheel is out of balance, it can be forks, flex, left, left and right, swinging arm flex or rigidity, 
There's so many areas where you can get chatter and that's how difficult it is to explain. But essentially, if the rider is getting chatter, the ride doesn't feel plush and he's not getting the feedback. It's getting disturbed by this chatter. So we can't push to the limits. So we want to eradicate chatter so the rider is communicating with the grip and the bike and they've got a one-to-one. -one. If chatter comes in, it kind of gets in the way of that communication. Setup is a terminology used by racers but is also used on the road and in off-road. Essentially, each rider wants the perfect setup. And just because it works for one rider doesn't work for the other one. What we mean when we have the perfect setup is, is that the rider is feeling connected with the bike. He's feeling the grip, he's feeling the power, he's feeling the throttle connectivity, he's feeling the brakes, and if he's got the perfect setup, he's almost one with the motorcycle. If he hasn't got the perfect setup, that communication isn't there, and something may feel vague, or he may not understand what is happening with the bike's suspension, or the grip, or the power. And setup is very specific, per rider. Some riders love the bike to be sat really on the rear so the steering is slow. Some riders love the steering to be really, really fast and erratic. It all depends on where they're racing and what they're doing. But setup, in simple terms, is how the rider is communicating with the motorcycle. Balance. Again, it's a little bit like setup and it's all down to each individual rider and most often used in racing. What they're trying to do is get the bike balanced. By this is, if they had all the weight at the front, the bike might be too front end heavy, which means that there'll be lots of pitching when you brake, it might want to understeer and go straight on. If there's loads of weight on the rear, again, it might understeer because when you're on the power because all the weight is on the rear. And the team are trying to find this balance. So you'll hear riders use balance and setup, which is kind of like a way of saying, I want to communicate with this bike, I want to hear what it's doing and feel what it's doing. And if I haven't got the setup and the balance correct, I can't do that, which means I can't push to the limit. Sag, which is used a lot to describe suspension. There's two forms of sag. There is static sag, and there is laden sag. At the moment, my 500X is on its center stand. When we take it off the center stand and it sits on its wheels, the suspension will sag from the weight of the bike. This is static sag. When I get on the bike, or me plus luggage plus pillion, we'll have laden sag, because the bike will sit a little bit more because it's now got the weight of me, my pillion, and my luggage. So sag is how much the suspension sags once it has the weight of the bike, or laden sag, which is once it has the weight of the bike, me, luggage, and rider. Got it? That is motorcycle language explained. Now, hopefully, you can have a conversation with your mates down the pub or your kids and you'll all be speaking the same language. If you want anything else explained, put your comments below and we'll try and do it. And if you want these topics explained in greater detail, we may be able to do that in future videos.